at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be looking at something very impressive, especially if you are a Godot developer. Now, this is a showcase of the graphical and rendering capabilities of the Godot game engine. A fellow named Andreas Hernandez, or Cyber Reality, has made a number of examples showcasing the lighting and rendering capabilities of Godot. The one you see in front of you right now is a demonstration called Decay. Uh, all of these things have configurable options. We'll see that in just a second, but they kind of just show you how good the graphics in the Godot game engine can actually be. He's done uh, three of these. We're going to see all three of them, and there's a brand new one that we're going to check out today. So as you can see up on screen, you can change the preset graphics. You can go between ultra and down from there. You can go full screen or not. You can show the FPS count. Uh, you, you've got fine-tuned control over just about everything you do. Now, interestingly enough, I think this particular demo is hard-capped at 60 frames per second because the majority of his other demonstrations actually run at the full 120 hertz of my display. Now, here we're seeing the second one. This one is called Anelia. This is about uh, Godot 4 experimental real-time uh, global illumination, I believe, was the idea behind it. As you can see, once again, you can change the results here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the sun on in a second. You can see immediately a huge ramification on the scene. You can also obviously change the quality settings. So we're going to jump this one up to ultra. So this one is showcasing the new real-time lighting that is built into the Godot 4 engine. Uh, pretty impressive, uh, I have to say. A lot of these also work with photogrammetry assets. So you're getting very realistic looking assets. Um, that's going to be even more obvious in the next example. Uh, I believe I switched to it in just a second. But as you can see from the frame rate, we're hitting basically 120 frames per second on this particular demo. Although there's probably a lot less geometry in that one than there are in uh, the first one we saw, Decay. And then this one, which is going to be Ella. Now, Ella, I actually covered on the channel in the past. Uh, it, again, was just a study in the, the lighting and working with photogrammetry made in the Godot game engine. All right, here it comes right now. So I, I honestly think that this is pretty photorealistic. Now, when I actually asked the comment section, people were pretty split on this. But I don't think you can argue that you can get some darn nice graphics out of the Godot game engine as is showcased in this particular example. Now, this example is set up like all of the other ones. These are binaries you can download. By the way, they are available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. So if you want to go ahead and check these out on your device of choice, uh, there is a downloadable version from uh, itch.io. Uh, you can also go to, I believe it's cyberreality.com is his website, but cyberreality.itch.io uh, is the itch.io page where you can download all of these things. Again, available on all three major platforms. Uh, this one does run at 120 frames per second, which again leads me to believe that Decay might be frame locked. But it was also probably the most uh, polygon intensive of the three examples. But as you can see, the, the lighting and rendering capabilities of the Godot game engine are pretty impressive, especially when you move into Godot 4. So uh, this was Ella. The only thing that I find a little creepy, again, uh, the Uncanny Valley, is when you start looking at photogrammetry human faces like we just saw there, uh, they can look a little bit off. I think the human face is still one of the hardest things to capture in computer graphics, and th this one is no exception. Another thing you'll notice is there's no actual animation or movement in any of these scenes. And now we move on to Myra. And you'll notice from the strange aspect ratio, this is running on my phone. Phone. Yeah, so what he's done is his next study is on the, um, and this is running on S21 Ultra, by the way, but this is running on Android devices. You can download the APK for it from itch.io. And this is another example of uh, real-time rendering capabilities of the Godot game engine. I'm going to bring up some performance metrics in just a minute so you can see how this is running. You may look at it and go, okay, well, that's a little bit jerky. Well, it's not actually jerky. I just have stubby fingers, I guess. So what you're seeing is as I'm scrolling, I'm hitting the end of the, the um the stride of my finger stroke, and that's why it's you know, suddenly coming to a, a halt. I guess if I had longer fingers or if I had a wider phone, you'd be able to see. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn on GPU watch. Now, this is an on-screen profiler, so you're going to see some details of the... Um, so I'm going to zoom in here but so you can see it. And what you're going to see is the GPU and CPU usage to go ahead and run this example. Now, this is actually kind of misleading. As you can see from the screenshot on the left, where I'm getting 120 frames per second, well, this boils down to um, when you start the screen recording software, it is hard capped at 60 frames per second. So you cannot record past that amount. You can see how much of the GPU and CPU are actually being utilized here. 
uh, to render this. But what you're seeing here, at least on a Galaxy S21 Ultra, is running at 120 frames per second. Now, I believe the uh, developer has a Pixel 5, he said, that he's getting 90 frames per second with. So if you want to check this one out, again, it is available up on his Itch.io page. Uh, the developer's name is Andre Hernandez uh, in CyberReality.com. It's also CyberReality.itch.io. The one we just looked at was that Myra example, but there's also the Anelia, the Ella, and Decay. He's also done a couple of other projects that you might find kind of interesting. Um, stereoscopic rendering in Godot, so if you want to do that whole three glasses thing. And he's also got an upsampling thing like FSSR kind of support. Uh, but if you want to grab this one, it is available up on itch.io as an APK file. Now, do be aware to run an, an APK or an Android package file. Uh, you are going to have to set your developer permissions to actually allow it to run. Uh, but it, it seems to be safe. My phone hasn't blown up since I installed it. Just know you can't just download an APK and run it on an Android device without changing some security settings to make it work. Again, you may want to check out that Godot super scaling example. It allows you to basically use less pixels and scale them up to get better performance. I believe he uses it in all of these examples because that is one of the configurable options you will see when you run these. Uh, and again, he's got a couple other things here, a couple of visual novels he's created also using the Godot game engine, but he's really showcased what the render capabilities of the Godot game engine are. Uh, this one, by the way, the Myra example, did not use real-time illumination. This was done with baked light maps. So you, it's a different approach to things, but as you see, even using just baked light maps as opposed to the new Godot 4 global illumination system, uh, you can still get some real, really good looking results. And I have to say, compared to Ella in Myra, he's kind of got the uh, human factor down so much better here. It's a much more believable human. Again, this is all photogrammetry stuff, so scanned from the real world, and it's kind of getting to the point where it's almost indistinguishable from the real world. So I'm going to ask the same question I did when I covered Ella in the past. Do you think this is photorealistic? Also, do you think it's pretty darn impressive it's running on an Android device? And if you check it out on your own device, please do let me know what kind of frame rates you get as well. That's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.